Hey everyone, Tio here. In today's video, I'm reviewing the ASUS ProArt PA147 CDV, which is an ultra wide LCD touchscreen display designed for use as a digital user interface for selected Adobe apps. So you can use the controls here as shortcuts for those Adobe apps. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit on loan from ASUS Singapore. In this video, I just want to present to you my findings and you can decide whether or not this is worth the money. Here in Singapore, this is priced at 829 Singapore dollars, which is around 590 US dollars. The official US pricing is not out yet. And this will be available in Singapore from mid-October onwards. This display is a spin-off from the secondary display called the ScreenPad Plus that's found on the ASUS ZenBook Duo series of laptops. This, by the way, is the ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo 14 from 2022, which I have reviewed a few weeks ago. Do check out that review if you are interested to find out how this performs. And this is the ultimate productivity laptop for 2022. Alright, just to give you the bottom line up front, this is a good looking display with solid build quality. The basic features provided by the controls, the buttons, the dials, the scroll wheel and the sliders, they work well. However, ASUS could have added more customization to the software to make this even more useful. So the main downsides or the limitations right now for the software is you cannot customize keyboard shortcuts into the controls here and the control panel is just limited to the five Adobe apps, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Lightroom. The other software feature is the ASUS DAW, which will give you even more shortcuts. You can assess ASUS DAW from this physical DAW. The downside is if you spin the wheel too fast, the settings will not be updated. So you have to spin the wheel a bit more slowly but otherwise the ASUS DAO works fine. There is one glitch though when ASUS DAO is active the control panel is inactive and if you want to use the control panel now it doesn't work so you have to minimize Photoshop and expand Photoshop again to make the app active so that the control panel can load again. Another limitation of this display is the aspect ratio, which you can see is ultra wide, which makes this quite short. So if ASUS had made this 16 by 9 or 16 by 10, I feel like that display is going to be more useful because you can use that display as a typical external display for displaying content. You can display content here as well. It's just that you will probably have to do a lot of scrolling because it only shows you half the content compared to a typical 16x9 or 16x10 display. In short, the control panel and ASUS DAO work as advertised. All ASUS needs to do is to add more customization options and update the software to fix some of the minor software glitches. Let's see what's included in the box. There is a power adapter with USB-A port here. These are the interchangeable plugs. Micro USB to USB-A adapter. Quick start guide, warranty info, color calibration report. The gamma is 2.12, color accuracy with average delta E of 0.48. Anything less than one is really good. The three cables are full-size HDMI to full-size HDMI. This is USB-C to USB-C. These two are for video transmission. And this one is USB-A to USB-C. This is to provide power to the display. This is the carrying sleeve for the display. This is well padded to provide some protection for the display. There is a magnet here for the flap. The material looks like leather, but I'm not sure if it's real leather. Anyway, they made the crease look really authentic. So this is the display. The size is 14 inches diagonal. In terms of surface area, this is about half the size of a 15 inch 16 by 9 display. The overall build quality is very solid. On the back, there are two long pieces of rubber feet. 
this is plastic matte textured on the front we have a matte textured surface this display can be propped up easily with the hinge this is the highest angle and this display can be deployed at whichever angle you prefer here we have the OSD menu button and this dial can be used to navigate through the OSD menu you can press in here to go into the menu and press here to go out of the menu this dial can also be used to control the ASUS dial software and there is a speaker here on this side as well as on the other side the audio quality is alright so so serviceable the power button and ports are located here away from the dial this is full-size HDMI and these two are USB-C ports with display port functionality. Right now I have the display connected to this Windows tablet and this display is also connected to power so there are two cables connected to this display currently. Resolution of this display is 1920 by 550 so there is slight pixelation noticeable from one arm's length away. The color spot is 100% sRGB, maximum brightness 400 nits and from what I can see the colors look great out of the box. The bezels are quite thin at the top, on the sides, thicker at the bottom. This display has pen support and this is the ASUS Pen 2 model number SA203H. This pen is not included, this pen is sold separately and this pen supports the Microsoft Pen Protocol 2. So you can also use other pens that have MPP2 on this display. For drawing purposes, there is slight diagonal line wobble. Initial activation force seems alright, it's just that it's kind of awkward to draw on such a wide aspect uh, canvas. So here you can see some of the diagonal line wobble. Before you can use this display as a control panel, there are three drivers you have to install. The ASUS ProArt Creator Hub, the ASUS Control Panel Toolkit, and the ASUS Dial Toolkit. And after you have installed the three, you will be able to customize the control panels here. At the time of making this video, the control panel can only be used with these five Adobe apps, Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Illustrator. These are the default controls for Adobe Illustrator. So there are dolls, there's this scroll wheel here, there are buttons, and if you switch to another app, the control panel will update automatically. So these are the default controls for Photoshop, and this one is for Lightroom Classic, so you can use sliders as well. There are vertical as well as horizontal sliders. The locations of all these controls are customizable and you can choose different types of controls and place them anywhere you like on the control panel. Let's see how you can customize the control panel. So let's say I want to customize the control panel for Adobe Photoshop. So this is the default controls. Let's say I don't want this scroll wheel. I can remove it. I can add something else here. So these are the different options you can add. Let's say I want to add a vertical slider. And it's added here. And there is no shortcut assigned to this yet. So you can choose the shortcuts from the pre-programmed list of shortcuts here. And this is one downside for the software. You can only choose from the pre-programmed shortcuts. If the shortcut that you want is not listed here, unfortunately, you won't be able to choose that. If I click on the button controls, I have another list of pre-programmed shortcuts that I can choose for that button. The button shortcuts can help you save some time if you need to reach deep into the menus to look for certain functionality. So for example, if I want to expand my selection, I have to click select, modify, expand before I can get this dialog box. Unfortunately, this expand functionality is not one of the shortcuts here, so I won't be able to customize that shortcut to the buttons here so that's 
the main downside of this software for me. Some of these button shortcuts are not that useful because you can already assess those shortcuts with your keyboard. Save is just Ctrl S, Hand tool is H, Lasso tool is L, Crop tool is C. So for me, I don't gain much productivity when using the save button here versus the Ctrl S button combination here with the keyboard. Certain controls here will work best with certain shortcuts, so you have to mix and match to find out what's the best pairing. For example, if I want to use a vertical slider for changing font size, this will mean my font size is limited to this range. So if I don't want to limit to the font size, I will have to choose a different interface such as the wheel control so that I can keep on scrolling. With the slider, I can only move up and down within that range. And also, depending on the controls you select, the shortcuts that are available will be different. Let's see how well the control panel works. So I can use this dial here to zoom in and out. It works fine. Let's say I want to use this dial here to change the opacity for this text here. Let me just zoom in close for you. So as I rotate the dial, I can see the opacity changes uh, here. So with this dial, I have to turn it several times and I can see the changes update instantly, which is great. Now, I may not want to turn this dial several times. I feel like changing opacity could be done better with a slider with 0% at the bottom and 100% at the top. So I've actually added a slider, a vertical slider here. But when I add this vertical slider, I don't have the control for changing opacity here. I cannot set changing opacity to this slider here. So that is the limitation of the software. There are some shortcuts I really want to set to the controls here, but I can't because there is no pre-programmed shortcuts listed here. So now I have some dummy text here, which are aligned to the left side. So I can tap this button here, paragraph align right to align the text to the right side. I can align to the center. I can justify all the lines. I can align it to the left again. So some of these shortcuts are quite useful because the alternative is to go into the palettes to find those buttons that do these um, actions. And having some of these shortcuts here can really improve productivity. So I actually work with a lot of text. So having many of the text adjustment controls here can help me save a lot of time. With certain apps such as Adobe Premiere Pro where there can be way too many shortcuts to remember the key combination for, it may be useful to have those shortcuts listed here with the names of the shortcuts so you don't have to remember so many keyboard shortcuts. So with Premiere Pro, you can use the dial for time axis adjustment. You can use this dial to move across the timeline or you can use the dial to zoom in and out of the timeline. Some controls don't work as well. For example, if I want to change the font size with the scroll wheel here, if I tap and scroll too quickly, I can see the scroll wheel turning, but I don't see the font size changing. So I actually have to tap and scroll slowly for the font size to change. This is not as fast or effective compared to using keyboard shortcut here. So I feel like if I can assign the keyboard shortcut to font size changes to two buttons here, one to increase and one to reduce font size, it would be so much faster and easier. But I cannot customize keyboard shortcuts into the interface. Another thing that doesn't work well is the brush size changes with Photoshop. So if I use the keyboard shortcut to change the brush size, you can see the cursor here. I can increase the brush size, reduce the brush size, and the cursor size will update instantly. If I use the dial here, notice how the cursor disappears. The brush size is actually changing because I can see the number change here, but I 
don't see the cursor size update. When I use this, the cursor just disappears. So I don't know how big that brush is. The other software feature I want to show you is the ASUS DAO, which is this software DAO, which will appear when you press the physical DAO here. So you can scroll the physical DAO to move across the options. You can create up to eight shortcuts here and you can create groups of shortcuts. So let's go into the brush group and here I have different brush shortcuts. Let's say I want to change the brush size. I can use the physical dial to adjust the brush size. Now one downside to the physical dial is if you turn it too fast, the numbers will not change that fast. So you have to scroll the physical dial slowly for the number to change. At least when you're changing the brush size with the ASUS dial, the brush size cursor is updated instantly unlike when you're using the control panel down. Let's look at the customization options available for the ASUS DAO. So here, for some reason, you can actually add more apps to the list instead of the five Adobe apps. So if I use Affinity Photo, I can actually just select Affinity Photo and create shortcuts around Affinity Photo and when I'm using Affinity Photo, the shortcuts would update accordingly. So currently this is the default set of shortcuts for Photoshop. If I want to add more shortcuts here, I can either add the shortcut or add groups of shortcut. So let's see how you can customize the shortcuts here which are actually listed here. So again, you can choose from the pre-programmed shortcuts. And thankfully, with the ASUS DAO, you can actually create your own keyboard shortcut. So if the shortcuts you want is not listed here on the list, you can just click here to customize function, which is to basically create your own keyboard shortcut here. So I'm not sure why ASUS did not add this functionality to the control panel to the Adobe control panel because this is so useful. All right, to conclude, generally speaking, the control panels work well. The main limitation here really is the inability to create your own keyboard shortcuts for the controls. ASUS already allows you to create keyboard shortcuts for the ASUS DAO, so that's something ASUS clearly is capable of doing. So all they have to do to make this product better is to update the software to let you have the ability to create your own keyboard shortcuts. As to whether or not this product is actually useful or can be productive really comes down to the apps you use and also your workflow. So I can't tell you or can't recommend you to buy this or don't buy this because I don't know your workflow, but hopefully I have presented enough information for you to make the purchase decision yourself. All right, I hope this review is useful. Thanks for watching. See you guys again. Bye.